Hello there, my name is Lanius and welcome to another Linux video. So today I'm going to uh, look at Endeavor OS. Actually, I'm looking at the Endeavor OS pretty much every time I'm on my computer. So let's call it a long term review, let's say. Also, it's a first time recording with a Flatpak OBS and I hope it will work well. Also, I got rid of, I mean, at least I'm not using it for recording, the noise torch because it was like torching <laughs> too much of the noise and the sound was not really good in my videos and I guess that's pretty important thing. But anyway, let's jump into this. So here I have a, a Endeavor OS VM to just, you know, look at the installation process and the defaults before we'll move on to my actual system, which is quite uh, different than the default one. Uh, as you can see it's XFCE and there's firewall I guess it's firewall applet which doesn't really work that well uh, on my system because it doesn't have the icon for some reason <coughs> but anyway let's go with the installer so Hmm, let's just, just maybe let's update mirrors because it's a little uh, outdated ISO. But we will select, uh, okay, I guess I don't really need that. I will select the online method, so I will have the mm, latest and greatest packages. Uh, and I will choose American English here, so you know what's going on. And here it's, it's correct. Mm. Let's do Polish. Let's do next. Also, what I like about Calamari's installer that it is really easy to just, uh, you know, to just encrypt your whole drive. So together with boot partition, but actually it's not really that big of a deal if your boot partition isn't encrypted. It's like very edge case scenario i would say that it would really be mm, meaningful anyway here we are using the whole disk let's swap to file which i usually do and let's go with better fs let's do encryption so we have the whole packet let's say and yeah here we have all the desktops to choose so the default one, I guess, is XFCE. They also have Plasma, of course, Gnome, Cinnamon, Mate. Oh, they have LXDE. I thought that it's not really shipped anymore. And I'm such a shield for the LXQT and LXTE that maybe I should try it try daily driving it myself at some point but anyway we're going with i3 because it's what I like and what I've chosen for my desktop of course so let's continue and yeah we have some choices here so we can actually install more then one of the desktops, some alternative kernels, 
but we're not going to do that <coughs> so let's create the user endeavor vm strong and complicated password as they say and let's do next everything seems fine here so let's install all right so i also quite like all this uh, uh, you know spacey space theme but of course I'm not using the Endeavor OS themes on my system because, well, they kind of make every system I use look pretty much the same. <laughs> but I will show you some nice things about uh, the default Endeavor um, i3, which I started using myself. And the camera is freaking out for a moment but now it seems it's okay so anyway mm, I actually also like that uh, Endeavor doesn't give too much options Nani? oh why are we still here just to suffer every night so that's that. Okay, so I've got a newer ISO, but it's, it's still too old ISO because uh, the installer tries to pull some uh, inexistent package, some grab theme for Endeavor OS, but it's not no longer here. So I guess I would need to get the updated newest ISO which is I guess Artemis Nova and it's Artemis Neo. So nah. 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 So I won't be wasting any more time but fuck i really wanted to uh, show you this how this looks like out of the box but whatever we're shutting this thing down and the quick gui looks awful after some update anyway so Let's talk about the Endeavor OS. I mean, other than the mm, weird problems with with ISO, not installing. I guess the offline installation would work then. Okay, let's give it a shot. I always have this, you know quick video and then something fucks up horribly and it's just a fucking mess at least the offline installation should be faster I believe I mean the failed online installation was also pretty fast, not gonna lie. But that's pretty... Mm, frustrating, if you will, but I guess I'm not getting to choose the desktop environment here. So that's... another fucking crap so anyway as we continue to fight with this stupid VM uh, 
the nice things about Endeavor that um, whatever what what I was talking about when I kind of uh, we had the error for the first time uh, was that I like that Endeavor doesn't really overwhelm the user with with so many options which is why I basically haven't chosen Arco Linux which I originally kind of wanted but just looking at all of these options there I was kind of wanting to try everything out and I ended up having you know like too much crap on the system <laughs> so in the end Endeavor is quite nice as a base because it gives you know all the mm, just gives you a desktop environment kind of even if you choose i3 or some other other window manager you kind of have this base on which you could build your own co configuration kind of even if it's your first time with a window manager so you could basically just keep the defaults from endeavor and maybe you know add something later like you know some other apps some more apps more workspaces or whatever but it's really really solid anyway okay now we're free so as you can see the this is my uh, system right there and what I actually have taken from Endeavor OS, which maybe I have already been talking about it, uh, the power profiles, which I kind of changed a little bit, but it's still from the Endeavor itself. And even the whole idea that using i3 bar can be, you know, nice, because by default i3 bar has, you know, the workspaces and it just it has some more things but it isn't something that is really appealing to me let's say and I thought I can't really do all of this stuff here but it turns out you can so I guess it's not really a, mm, a rice tour but Yeah, all these problems with this VM kind of uh, threw me off a bit. Now it worked. So let's maybe look at the defaults. Yes, done. Let's go already. Come on. Oh, the passphrase, of course. I encrypted the drive for some reason. <clears throat> so the nice grab theme so maybe even on the XFC version I can show you some you know nice things the login screen kind of nice actually the light DM is the only thing that kind of broke for me but it was because I installed some weird uh, some weird theme which kind of stopped working at some point and I had to just you know uh, recover the defaults because in the end I'm not really looking all that much at the login screen right so and the default one is kind of nice so we have here the default 
xfce as you can see it already has some nice effects here and it looks really cool but what i would want we have terminal in, no it's not the okay so what i would want maybe let's update the system first which might be not really a, a good thing but the first thing you already can see is that we have an aur helper installed out of the box which is not the case i mean <laughs> nothing is installed out of the box on arch linux right but by default it's in the like it's not in the arch repository none of the aur helpers are in the arch repository and as far as i know arch is really hesitant to even you know like uh, to endorse aur even though it's like the main reason why people choose Arch. I mean, the, the actual Arch Linux repository isn't that big. I mean, it's, it is up to date, of course, it's rolling distro, it's all nice, but the AUR is the big thing why people choose actually Arch Linux, but for some reason they don't want to you know say you know AUR it's it's nice they kind of ignore it so that's that which is really weird uh, the system dealless spin of Arch Linux which is Artix they have an AUR helper in the repo i mean it's trizen treason which i actually only installed to install yay but it's still in my opinion better than not having it at all so that is that's one weird thing about arch linux I mean, like uh, Slackware has kind of, you know, uh, AUR kind of uh, Slack builds, which aren't official, but they are endorsed by the distribution because, you know, I guess they, the AUR should also be by Arch Linux, but I mean, the least they could do is at least including a AUR helper in the basic repository, which I don't think is really that big of a deal. But, well, what do I know, right? <coughs> so, other nice thing about uh, Endeavor is that we have a firewall pre-configured <coughs> there are a lot of distributions that actually go with uh, come with a firewall <coughs> but usually it's disabled or the mm, uh, or the GUI for the firewall is <laughs> like doing nothing uh, like in Nitrox maybe it changed I'm going to take a look at Nitrox actually in a quite soon maybe so I've updated here this VM and what actually was breaking the installation was this package I checked the logs and this package is no longer in the repositories but the installer wanted to install it because I guess it was before <coughs> so can we kind of easily install i3 
I mean the Endeavor OS i3. Mm, okay, I guess that's this. If I would select that, would it pull everything? No. So I guess I'm not going to do this because I wouldn't anyway, you know. I wouldn't be going around and taking all the applications that that were in the um, default set of applications because even though many YouTubers like to go around and show what is installed, what is not installed, it doesn't really matter that much actually. I mean, of course, some stuff like, you know, firewall or some uh, system services like going pre-configured with the distribution, they can be a big, uh, big plus because they sometimes are a pain to set up. And when they are already configured, then it's really nice. So the default Endeavor OS theme looks like something I could actually just use because it's, you know, nice. It doesn't differ that much from the i3 because i3 also uses the same themes. It uses Tunar, it uses uh, XFCE terminal, which is really good terminal emulator. I think it's better than GNOMES and like many others. It comes with the mm, you know, drop down terminal uh, option. I mean, you can just add a, a keyboard shortcut to make it drop down. I guess it isn't configured here. It's usually is F12 for Quake, but it's not configured there. But it's pretty easy to have to configure it, even though it's not my terminal emulator of choice, but it's really good. So what else I would like to say? So Endeavor also um, also has some nice tools like the updater. I mean, I'm not really using it right now, but even without any configuration here, it would uh, give you notifications that there are updates so that's kind of nice i mean i don't know uh, how other arch users uh, do their updates but i actually just update every day i mean it's it's quicker and also if something would break i can quite easily know what did break because i just update a bunch of packages at a time so that's just easy to spot uh, what could have broken so I mean what is this okay it just opens the Arch Linux packages page so I use <laughs> Endeavor, but I haven't really gone too much uh, around with this. <coughs> but it's kind of nice. Some tips there. Also, the nice thing <coughs> is that we, I, I haven't shown this, but when you mm, boot up the uh, USB stick let's say or the the ISO you can choose to use Nvidia drivers and when you install it with choosing this Nvidia at the start actually the Nvidia drivers are pre-installed then and every so often I've at least maybe not so often at least once <laughs> i seen dt talking about installing ubuntu and choosing you know the like checkbox for the um, proprietary firmware and codex and stuff he was saying something along the lines that it installs you know this 
this and that, the NVIDIA drivers, but no, no, no. It installs just this, so some firmware blobs and the codecs and the drivers you have to install yourself from the Ubuntu drivers thing. But in Endeavor, I was kind of surprised because I was, you know, I wanted to install the drivers after installing the system, but they were already there, so I didn't need to do anything, which is really nice, actually. And what can I say? I will have a really bad time editing this video because it's like... Uh, chopped in a few chunks because of the problems with the VM which made me not able to show you the default uh, i3 setup but but the XFCE looks really nice I mean XFCE in general is kind of I would say maybe the one of the best uh, one of the best uh, desktop environments period I mean also I became the fanboy of LXTE and LXQT even though I've never daily driven it but it's really nice uh, I actually kept many default stuff from Endeavor but recently I've also um, switched from Tunar to PCMan FM. One thing, it's from LXQT, <laughs> but that's not the reason. The reason is that Tunar and other XFCE apps, for some reason in Arch repos, are really outdated. It's from 2020. And I know that XFCE is quite slow with updates, but the version now it's like 417 something and the 417 was released like in 2021 and the reason why i even spotted it is because i was looking uh, into the option of tunar having the dual pane view so but and it has this dual pane view, but it's in 417 version, which isn't in Arch repositories, which I guess uh, Budlabs was Budlabs was saying was mentioning in the video from which I got a shout out <laughs> about uh, uh, about hopping to Ubuntu. So that's not uh, actually Endeavor OS problem, that's an Arch problem, which is weird that a distribution like Arch would really mm, lag behind with a desktop environment while they are, if I'm, if I'm right, they are kind of on the edge with a KDE, I guess with GNOME maybe, but I'm not really, you know, I'm not sure, so I'm just, but I'm pretty, pretty, uh, I'm pretty sure that they are going with Plasma mm, quite, uh, quite at the cutting edge, but why they don't do it with XFC, I mean, it's not that, that they cannot, you know, mm, that XFC is going too fast, yeah? So that's weird. That's just weird. Because it would be nice to have, you know, all the newest features there. <coughs> so I guess that might be kind of, you know, um, bad recommendation to, you know, uh, for using XFC with Arch, even though I think it's pretty solid, but it would be nice if they updated it, right? So what's my, so I guess I will be wrapping this thing up because it took too long because of the problems. 
we had with this uh, VM. So that's PCMAN FM, by the way. And here you go, dual pane mode. So that's that. So how do I see Endeavor OS? So for me, I think it's like Arch Linux. I mean, all, all advantages of Arch without weird quirks of Arch, which I mean with the AUR helpers not being in the repos, which <coughs> is just, you know, a little tedious that you have to install it like ma manually and you know it's not updated then I mean okay it can update itself from the UR so that's <laughs> that's wrong so it can be updated because it can update itself basically when you install it but it's still adding some I think unnecessary mm, complications so as, as I kind of show you, the Endeavor is kind of easy to install Arch Linux, uh, provided you have up-to-date ISO, which you should always have if you are installing a rolling release. And that's you know, a fail on my part because I used outdated ISO from Quick Emu which is kind of a script for uh, quickly creating VMs. And also the ISO I used to install was already up outdated to the point it didn't work. So that was that. So I lost my train of thought, but to wrap it up and to sum up this kind of long-term review, Endeavor OS is really solid choice it's not uh, quote unquote bloated it gives you the solid base uh, whatever uh, desktop environment or window manager you want you you have an option with some solid defaults which you could use to just build your own uh, system on it <clears throat> which is what I have just done and I'm really enjoying it and mm, I guess Endeavor just made made me an Arch user by the way and it seems that it's going to be a long time even though I was kind of entertaining uh, installing Slackware <laughs> again but uh, but Arch Linux is just it's just good choice, I think, for me at least. With the with all the software availability, and with Endeavor just making it easier or, or I should say less tedious to install, which. It's really that big of a deal because you know you install it once and that that but but still so I haven't used many arch based distros as daily drivers it was actually only arch linux itself and artix and now endeavor os so I can't really say oh it's the best arch based distro because I haven't tried like any mm, significant significant amount of them but it's really nice it's really stable only problem I had was as I said with the display manager which I installed some obscure uh, theme thing and it just broke after some update and also maybe the fact that it's quite <coughs> quite minimal system because you know when we say that some that the system break is usually just that 
you know the desktop environment doesn't start and if you have a window manager that's basically just only one point of failure like uh, you no know, there's also maybe a problem with a driver or something like x server just doesn't work but it's less uh, points of possible failure than let's say kde gnome or you know actually xfc is also very stable so it's not a an example but to wrap it up finally <laughs> it's very good it's surprisingly stable i was kind of worried that it would you know cause some pro some problems but nothing bad happened which maybe will happen after I said it. <laughs> it works very, very well. It's easy to install. It gives you a solid base. And I really recommend it if you like Arch or want some to try some ro solid rolling release distro then that isn't uh, like, I don't know what other option there is, Gentoo or OpenSUSE Tumbleweed which has a very slow package manager <laughs> so that's that so thank you for watching and see you in the next one bye bye edit okay yeah nice